Buckle up, my friends, because today we are talking about crosses in the sky and UFOs. To do that, we have to jump into our time machines and go back to the past. And we're going to the country that I haven't yet covered on my channel in relation to mysteries, UFOs, etc, etc. It's UK. And we're going back to the past as far as the year 1967. That was the year when people started to talk about flying cross UFOs in the UK. What was that? There were even some witnesses who said that once this flying cross UFO appeared in front of them and if they were in a car, then the car completely stopped, the radio was switching off and nothing was happening as if it, the car was dead. And once this object flew away, the car started to work as usual. So pretty interesting things were happening in the year 1967. my friends welcome back to the channel today i'm a bit experimenting with the format i'm gonna have a little bit shorter video my intention is if i will have enough time which it looks like not but maybe i will there will be like two types of videos on my channel a little bit shorter stories and then the long deep dives as you are used to see on my channel so this is the experiment of the shorter type that being said let's dive in into the flying cross ufos to understand these flying cross phenomena, we are going to look specifically into one case that has become, I guess, the most popular among all of the rest sightings. So it happened on October 24th, year 1967, and the main characters of this sighting are actually two policemen who were driving their police car. Their names were Roger Wiley and Clifford wake it. It was an early morning, 4 a.m., and the policeman's location was between Halsworthy and Hatherley on the A307 road in Devon. Suddenly, a bright light appeared in front of them. Uh, it took a shape of a cross and it started to chase the police's car. So it was following them and reaching up uh, the speed up to like 90 miles per hour. It looked like a star spangled cross radiating points of light from all angles, Constable Wiley told the press. It was traveling about treetop height over wooded countryside near Halsworthy, Devon. We drove towards it and it moved away. It then led us on a chase as if was playing a game with us. The policemen radioed their base saying that they are chasing after some kind of flying object, but at the end this object developed a very high speed and they couldn't keep up with it. At the end this object accelerated and disappeared towards north. Also the policemen said that before this object disappeared they noticed that this object was joined by another similarly looking object, namely cross-shaped, and only then they both disappeared, meaning there were more than just one cross, actually. All of this chase ended at around 5 a.m., meaning that all of this happened within an hour. No, no sign that I heard at all. It was, um, there was no outside uh, noise apart from the noise of the car itself. And the acceleration, the acceleration away from us was terrific. So, really, we didn't get under it. To hear any sound. But you were really close enough to be absolutely certain that your eyes weren't fooling you. Oh yes, uh, it was just in front of us. <laughs> there was no question whatsoever that um, this was a pigment in the imagination. It was, it was definitely there, it was definitely either manned uh, by some sort of being or remotely controlled. It was definitely being controlled to view our car or... You or had the feeling it was watching you. Definitely. Yeah. The story gained a lot of attention from mass media, the policemen were interviewed, and what is interesting, during that time, also other people in the UK started to report similar sightings independently from these two policemen. Peak of these sightings was from the end of October up to like the beginning of November. I am mentioning this period of time because it will be very crucial in relation to the official conclusion coming from the Ministry of Defense. So yes, uh, this case became quite serious and Ministry of Defense had to investigate it and they created a special intelligence branch 
that uh, came down to all of these sighting places and tried to understand what's the explanation behind all of these sightings. One of the first options was that they were actually seeing the American Air Force doing their training because during that time they had some kind of training and they during that training they were crossing also UK's territory but when they looked at the schedule of these flights they didn't match actually with the sighting time so it was immediately discarded these were not Americans that was something else of course the next step would be to suspect some Soviet spies as usual even though this was the time of the Cold War, nothing really pointed out to the Soviets and I also could not find any source confirming it. And I guess after losing hope on blaming other countries for this event, they stuck to the theory of Venus. So what is next? The Ministry of Defense concludes uh, from their investigation that what people are actually seeing and freaking out almost throughout all of the UK is Venus. They've been seeing Venus and thinking that this is a UFO. Of course, many people didn't like this explanation. They asked questions like, yeah, but uh, this object was moving. Venus is not moving and it had a cross shape. Venus doesn't have this kind of shape. Well, let's look a little bit deeper and uh, go back to both of those policemen again and also involve some scientists. This brings us to a man named Howard Miles from British uh, Astronomical Association. It was said that he was involved in the research or analysis of the phenomena and at the end he didn't come out with any like research results and it was quite weird. And I started to dig on the internet to find at least something about this Howard Miles and why didn't he come out with any like official results and I bumped into this blog uh, on the internet that was created by Ian Ridpath. I hope I pronounced the surname correctly. I will link it down in the description box. So Ian reached out to Mr. Miles and uh, wanted to ask some questions about his involvement in this Devon case and about the results that he never actually published. Mr. Miles replied with a long extensive email stating that he didn't feel like it's necessary to publish any official results because it was obvious it was Venus what all of these people saw. He then continued in the email to explain that his involvement wasn't as big as uh, you might think. Uh, he was actually reached out by some kind of TV program, British TV program, and he was invited in the studio as an expert to, de to defend and prove that it was actually Venus. And in the studio, there were also uh, both of the policemen with their testimonies and also some UFO expert. I don't know the name of this expert, but like there was a guy who said that he's an UFO expert. They were supposed to have a quality discussion about uh, this Devon case and what both of the policemen saw. Uh, Mr. Miles got angry really, very quickly because he's a serious man. He understood that this UFO expert doesn't have a clue about uh, astronomy and he's talking complete BS. So Mr. Miles immediately ended this stupid discussion with proving that this is Venus with some scientific facts and he said that both of the policemen actually at the end agreed with him and I quote I explained all the usual optical illusions that arise when a very bright object is seen in the sky and the idea that it must be near if it's very bright they seem quite satisfied that was my sole contribution to the TV episode the two policemen accepted my explanation of the apparent motions of Venus as being due to traveling along the bending road. We could actually put a full stop here because according to Mr. Miles he proved to them scientifically that that was Venus and they accepted it. End of the story. It was Venus. However, there's a bit of controversy. You see, both of these policemen, years, years after this event took place, they were again reached out and they were asked for an interview. They were already retired policemen and they were again talking things like, we were so surprised, we didn't know what it was. It was uh, something that uh, we couldn't explain, like out of this earth. Why would they again stick to the initial testimony 
if, according to Mr. Miles, he had convinced them that that was actually Venus. Something is not sticking there. I don't know if it was like a purpose to make them look foolish or maybe it's just a coincidence. When the Ministry of Defense's uh, investigators interviewed both of the policemen, they also had their own conclusion about their testimonies. And their conclusion was that you cannot really rely on both of the policemen's testimony. The official report noted, it was apparent that the policemen had rehearsed their story several times as a result of interviews with the press. By this time, they had drawn certain conclusions from their observations, for example, that they had seen a spaceship, which was quite unsupported by their actual account of events. Venus is still a plausible explanation for what they saw. Another controversy in relation to this investigation and this conclusion that you cannot really trust those policemen guys because they invent stories is the fact that this uh, report was withdrawn from the public for around 30 years. It was available for the public only in the year 1998 and you can see it uh, in the UK's National Archives. The public needs to know if those guys were lying or inventing the stories. I don't know, for me it's a bit suspicious. After all of these years, both policemen are convinced that the Ministry of Defense were eager to sweep this case under the rug and would rather that they keep this sighting to themselves. At least that was their impression after what they had experienced from the investigation process. Although they were publicly made somewhat fools, they are convinced. They know what they saw. All of this story also a little bit reminds me of the Ghost Rockets case over Scandinavia in the year 1946. Lots of people saw it, but the government was strictly implying that this is nothing special. Afterwards, no similar cases were reported, exactly how it happened with this Devon case. If you haven't seen the video about ghost rockets over Scandinavia on my channel, I will link this video in the description box. So for this case, uh, the official conclusion is that a lot of people in the UK in the year 1967 from October until November saw in the sky not a flying cross UFO, but Venus. If it was indeed Venus in 1967 making all of this trouble in the sky, all of this should have been repeated at some point. There would be someone who did not know this story and does not know astronomy and would have started the reports again. I refuse to accept the idea that suddenly the whole UK became experts in astronomy whenever they saw Venus in a similar way that people saw in the year 1967, they immediately knew that this is not a UFO, this is Venus. We shouldn't report, this is nothing weird about that. Like, I'm an average person. I don't know anything about like stars and planets. I'm not into that. And if I saw something weird, I would definitely consider that, hmm, I don't know what it is. Is it a UFO, you know? And I don't believe that since 1967, nobody had this thought again. Please do not come after me. I am totally idiot in astronomy, as I said. And uh, I totally rely on science and I respect and I'm not accusing anyone. And if the science has proven that it was Venus, from all the aspects, okay, I agree with you. At the end, of course, if you start to analyze the possibilities without having any solid proof, you can also dream and go really wild into fantasies with this case. Because there are also people who believe these flying crosses are actually angels or something divine. I mean, nobody has forbidden us to not think so. Everything is possible until proven wrong. It's just... Coming from a place where I have also read about Project Blue Bean, at the back of my head, I'm also kind of, what if this was a rehearsal? In those times, people were more gullible than they are now. Now a lot of people are asking questions, the right questions, and are suspicious about a lot of things. In those times, when you were like talking about UFOs in the sky, people would probably tell you to check your mental health, you know? So I, I have this like feeling that there is also this option. 
but it's like a crazy thing somewhere at the back of my head if you know what I mean. Anyways, if among you who are watching this video there is someone who is very smart in relation to planets and Venus and can probably explain all of this to me in simple words in the comment section, you're very welcome to do that. I'm very open to very good criticism. And uh, that being said, there's just one question I need to ask you guys. Which theory do you believe? Was it Venus that a lot of people in UK saw in the year 1967? Or was it something else like flying cross UFO? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this shorter format of my video. Let me know what you think. And I truly, truly wish you a very happy and successful day. See you next time.